Hey everyone, it's Oddie Lindley here from One Number, and today I'm going to walk you through how to highlight the top or bottom N values in a highlight table. So this workbook is in the description below if you want to follow along, you want to see any calculations that I've used, you know, things like that. Uh, but this is basically what it will look like. So at the moment, we're highlighting the bottom 17 values by total cost. Uh, I can swap that to the top 17 values by total cost, and I can increase the number top 39 values by total cost, or the top 12, you know, whatever that would be. That's what we're going to try and build. So feel free to download and follow along. Otherwise, you know, use Sample Superstore or something and see if you can implement it in your own in your own way. Okay, so just to get the sort of bones of this view in place, I'm going to put department description and provider on rows, total cost onto text. Okay, there we go. And we're kind of on our way. So the first thing that I need to do is create a parameter that allows me to swap between the top and the bottom values. So let's do that. Create a parameter and I'm going to call this top or bottom values to highlight. Uh, I'm going to make this a string based parameter. This is actually quite important, the string. I'm going to make the value descending and ascending. And I'll display this as top or bottom. Why? Because what we're going to try and do here is we're going to attach this parameter value into a rank function in a calculated field. Now, rank has the ability to let you specify whether you want to rank it ascending or descending. And that's exactly what we're going to use to get the top or bottom. Okay, so that's how this parameter is going to be used. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to show you the parameter just so that we can see it over here top and bottom. Remember, the underlying value is descending and ascending. Then let's create another parameter to give us the top n values to highlight, you know, something like that. Uh, top n values to highlight. Hmm, is this? Okay, cool. I thought my original parameter was already called that. I'm going to make this an integer. I think I'll select a range. Why not? Uh, minimum, maximum to 100, step size 1, and we're good to go. You know, nothing too crazy. We'll show this parameter. Here we go. Okay, cool. Now, parameters, just va variables. You need to create a constant for the parameter to take the place of, right? We need to tell Tableau what to do when those parameters change. So we're going to use a calculated field to do that. So I think I'll show you like two levels of this calculated field. Uh, one, the first level might be fine, but... I think it'll be a little bit better with the second one. Okay, so I'm just going to call this, uh, let's call it values to highlight. Do I already have a field called that? No. Okay, we're fine. So I'm going to say rank sum of total cost. Uh, now here's, I'm going to input my comma, and here's what I'm going to put that ascending or descending, which is my parameter. So I'm going to call this top or bottom values to highlight. Uh, is less than or equal to my top n values to highlight. Something like this should be fine. Uh, what is my error? Oh, values to highlight already exists. <laughs> I'm just going to call this n values to highlight. Okay, thanks, Tableau. Then I'm going to hit OK. Uh, do you see how this just gives me like a little true or false? So when I pop this onto color, now you can see, okay, we've got those two colors. I'll change my mark type to square because it's a, I want a highlight table. But do you notice how once I do that, I now get this horrible like uh, setup over here. It's basically because in a highlight table, Tableau does super well coloring based on a, on a continuous field, but coloring based on a discrete field, not so happy. So the simple workaround is to change your mark type to bar and create a field called max of one or something like that. And here I've literally just said, find the maximum value of one. Why? Because I want all the bars to be the same size. And if I put that max of one onto size, it's gonna kind of fill up all those bars straight away. I'm gonna click on size again and just increase it so that really does look a little bit like a highlight table, albeit a little bit of a gross one. So let's, let's fix that. I'm gonna click on color. I'm going to add in some white borders, I think, to sort that out. Uh, okay, where's my color legend? 
I'm going to go to Analysis, Legends, and drop out this color legend. Um, all right, so we've got values to highlight. Now, you'll notice we've got true, false, and null. I don't really need to color the null and the false values, I don't think. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this color palette. I think true, I'm going to make blue, true blue, baby. And false, I can either make gray, you know, null, I can also make gray, something like this. Uh, let's hit OK. But I think something that's a little bit nicer is to actually color them with a transparent color palette so that I'm literally not highlighting them at all. Now, if you want to learn how to make a color palette in Tableau, your own custom color palette, uh, I've actually done a video on that before, and I'll put that in the description below. So feel free to go and take a look at that. And uh, if you want to create a custom transparent color palette, you just need to find the little uh, code, hex code for a transparent color, and then you're good to go. And what's super cool about that is now, you know, none of those cells are highlighted except for the ones that I've chosen, right? So now you can see true, false, and null. Now, all of this is going relatively well, I think. However, hmm, you might notice that it's supposed to be the top one value to highlight, but we have definitely got more than one value highlighted right now. And the simple reason is because this is a table calculation. Rank is a table calc. And so Tableau is currently calculating this by table across, meaning each row is getting its own top one value to highlight by total cost, which could be how you want this laid out. But I think I'm going to do it for the whole table, meaning I want this calculated by table across and then down, you know, something like that, just to make sure that I've only got one value. So now I can bump this up to 54 or to 24, you know, wherever, and I can swap between bottom and top, and that looks pretty good. Cool. Okay, so the next level is how to change this color palette based on whether it is a top or a bottom value, right? You'll notice that we've got blue, for top and for bottom, which might not be the end of the world, but if you want to take it to the next level, I'll let you know just now. But if you want to learn more about Tableau, why not join us for one of our courses? We really are excited about our courses at the moment. Uh, we're launching new ones all the time, and uh, we've got some cool ones coming up in the new year. Everything from Tableau complete beginner courses. You know, I just want to learn as much about Tableau as I can. Uh, to get me going to advanced courses, to courses based on Tableau calculations and Tableau prep. We've got a course for you and we'd love to see you there. Okay, let's ramp this up. So I'm going to open up this end values to highlight. And so far, let's, let's do this. Okay, so far, so good, right? This is not, this is not bad. But what we basically want to do is we want to say to Tableau, hey, if my top or bottom values to highlight is top, then, uh, you know, return a something that says top values, or, you know, something like that. And if, it's, if it says bottom, then return something that says bottom values. So in order to do that, we're going to use a little nested if statement. So if you haven't used those, these before, it's okay. It's basically just an if statement inside an if statement. And we're going to say something like, if our top or bottom values to highlight is equal to, and now we've got to remember, we want this descending. So that's the underlying value. Remember, we're not referring to just what Tableau's outputting at the top. We're referring to what the true value of the parameter is underneath, which we can find over here, descending and ascending. So we're gonna say, if top or bottom values equals descending, then, uh, then let's do this. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. So if, if this, then top, top values or something. And right. Um, then we're going to throw in a little else if, and we're going to take the same thing. Okay, let's throw that in. And okay, top or bottom, let's change this to ascending. Let's change this to bottom values. 
and let's end it. Okay, cool. So what have we done? We've basically just, with this nested if statement, found a way of saying to Tableau, if the parameter is descending, I want you to output this particular output. But the only way that we could get it to say top values in relation to all of this is with this little nested if statement. Okay, that's the basic idea. So let's hit okay, see what happens. So our little uh, editing on our color legend has been redone. So let's double click uh, again on the nulls. I'm going to just set this little transparent color. You know, I love that. Let's do that. Okay, so we've got our bottom values. Let's swap to top. Here are our top values. So let's make the top blue again. And we should be all good to go. Top 38. Should we just double check that it's table across and then down. That's perfect, that's what we want. So back down to top one, bottom one. Okay, lovely. So why do we have bottom five or something? Well, they're all just zero. So that's the way that it works. And mostly it's because we have a, uh, you know, the kind of rank that we're using is a, oh, I, I'd have to specify it in the underlying calculation. The kind of rank that we're using is just the default rank. If I wanted, to just, hey, you know, if we've got five zero dollars um, and I only wanted one of those highlighted, I need to choose rank unique, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, I hope this really helps. If there are any questions that you have on this, or you have, uh, you know, you struggle implementing it, throw them down in the comments below. We'll do our, our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, if there are any other videos that you'd like us to, to cover, let us know too. Uh, we love hearing your suggestions on, on what you want us to cover. All right. Awesome. Until next time, keep well.